like magic. Uh, say it took nearly three years to write. A lot of musicians say if it's not working to begin with, then then they scrap the song and move on to something else. Uh, has this led to you making sure you kind of never scrap pieces of music again, or are you still quite um, you can still kind of throw away things? And has, has it changed? I suppose that the, what I'm getting at is, is has it kind of uh, after this album has it will it has it and will it change your writing process? Um. Yeah, I think holding on to tracks and seeing them out a little bit, unless you're really not digging them, it's really down to your own taste. And with Black Magic, it was just something that just there was just something about it that kept on coming back because we we had the riffs, um, we had the kind of we had pretty much the entire outro, um, which was a big thing for us. And it was just there's a reason we kept on coming back to it because it was great. And you know, it's it's really what you vibe off. It's really what your taste is. You have to have faith in your own taste and not worry about what other people think. You've got to do music as a as an end in itself rather than a means to an end of stuff. I think just trying to get back into that rhythm and that groove and not worrying about what people will expect us to do um, because that's not what we were worrying about with the first record. It's very much like we just we just dug what we did on the in the practice room and you just like. Or do you want to do this idea that we kind of like? Or do you want to do this idea that we really like? And that's pretty much the crux of it. Well, um, it you just got to follow your nose. It, it's it's good it's good to hear that that um, in regards to your writing, you, you're not you're not necessarily writing as much as, as much as you want to please those people that did that do enjoy your music. You, you're writing it for yourself rather than for for the people that have already heard something. They want to hear more of that same thing. I think with alter- the alternative side of the spectrum in terms of like rock and roll and stuff, um, I think people want to believe the, the people they're listening to. And I think, especially on, in this neck of the woods, are pretty tuned in to when people are faking it or people are doing it for the wrong reasons, like then getting famous and success and then using music as a means to that end. It's mm. not really a sincere process. It's like you've just got to believe, basically. And, Hopefully, believe, people believe in the Amazons, and we'll continue making music that we believe in, and, and hopefully, people can connect with that. Well, say listening for the album, it, it's 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 refreshing to hear, I suppose, in in this day and age, and and I, I say that um, as on a kind of way because the your the the music within the album, it kind of it harks back to kind of previous classic rock and stadium rock. Um, cool. But then you've got indie influences in there, and it is kind of like a melting pot of many different influences. But totally. at the same time, I, it still kind of remains uh, new and kind of individual to yourselves. It still it sounds like the Amazons, but uh, you can hear so many kind of little bits in there. Um, going on from that, you know, I, I suppose maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, there, there might have been a lot of bands that were uh, that possibly similar to yourselves in style. Um, yeah. and and not, maybe not so much now. Uh, do you do you Quite. think do you think rock music needs a, a revolution or an evolution? <laughs> um, okay, um, I think rock and roll, rock music, guitar music just needs to not give a. F- <laughs> I don't think it matters. I really just don't care. I don't care about our place in music. I don't care about where we are. Like. As far as I'm concerned, um, it's like rock and roll's kind of done its job. Like it started in theatres and clubs when Chuck Berry was kind of getting out there and stuff, and it kind of went to the Beatles, and it, it kind of did that. And then there was punk, and then there was all this stuff, and it's kind of gone from these tiny theatres to like I don't know, like the 80s when you two were doing stadiums, and they still do that. And then you had like the that kind of counterculture with Nirvana and 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 Grunge, but they still took took over the world. And then you said Go Away, just doing their work. It's like it's like what else is there for rock and roll to do? I, I, I see um, where you come from that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's not we don't feel any responsibility to like take rock and roll to somewhere bigger than that or <laughs> you know take rock and roll back to its roots. So like, what part of rock and roll? Are people worried about like being like for my in my everyone's kind of especially journalists are worrying about rock and roll's place in the world because it doesn't it's not in the singles chart mm. like and it's not selling millions of singles and it's not 
on the top top 50th Spotify and all this stuff. But yeah. when was rock and roll being about being popular? When was rock and roll about ma- making money? It was never about that. So I don't see the problem. Like, it'll come and go, but it's rock and roll transcends everything. That, that's a fantastic thing. That's, so yeah, that, that's awesome. yeah that's a fantastic answer you know um i i, I from that i think i you know put simply you know uh, you're you're there doing your thing and um and who else really and as as long as you're happy with it um then yeah what's the what's the problem you know <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. talking about that though uh, going back to the album is is there any parts on that first album that you go oh, i wish i could have done that again Oh, totally. Uh, <laughs> at least half of it. Um, I wouldn't have done it again mm. because I understand where we were and what who like. This was the first time we ever made a record, and <laughs> for the first time ever making an album to go top ten, it's like what? How much more can I ask of myself? You haven't done a bad my job. Twenty-one year old self. <laughs> it's just like so. No, I would. Ch- I would. I would change. Uh, but I'm I don't I'm not hard on ourselves because I know we can you know take whatever experiences we had in the first record and hopefully implement them in the second record. So that, make something even better. Like that's all we can hope for, yeah. or at least not even better. Just something that excites us and <laughs> it's fun to play for eighteen months on the road. And um, mo- moving on to uh, going on the road, you, you've obviously you've just come off tour. Um, yeah. ready to go uh, back out on tour kind of the start of next year um, yes uh, obviously uh, coming to Cambridge which we're all really excited about I'm uh, yeah. I'm actually booking up my tickets this evening with a few friends that is oh, thank you. It, it will be on the list we will be there and uh, I'm yeah. really looking forward for it um, cool. that's that is, uh, February the 8th um, that's at the junction uh, I'm sure you already know that but uh, just for those listening uh, always good to have a little plug Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, so February the eighth, two thousand eighteen, the Junction in Cambridge. You can get your tickets. Um, I, I, I imagine you can just go straight to the Amazons.co.uk and you can get them there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, best place to go for it. Um, mm-hmm. You um, you played earlier in the year. You played in March time uh, to sold out uh, sold out room at the Portland Arms. Um, yeah. How does uh, how do you think Cambridge gigs compare to other shows within the tour? You know, C- Cambridge is quite a well, can be sometimes uh, perceived as as kind of like a, a obviously it's a university town, but kind of a, not necessarily like your normal universities. It was a fun show. It was a fun show because by the end of it, we felt like we'd earned we'd earned kind of a reaction from the audience and stuff. You know, it wasn't. You know, it's not like playing in Glasgow where everyone just goes yeah. nuts <laughs> as soon as like your tech starts playing smoke on the water and the line check or whatever before you go on like it's kind of um yeah it's an interesting it's a beautiful city and um we definitely enjoyed playing there and we enjoyed the challenge of it and we had a good talk to everyone outside after the show and stuff and we knew that there was another show at the junction that night when we played so we were really excited to to sell the place out and and we're excited to play again and and I guess people will now know. I mean, we've never played in Cambridge, Cambridge before, so people kind of will know now what an Amazon show is all about, and it's kind of it's kind of whatever you want to do goes really. Like, I mean, the amount of gigs that we go to and we stand at the back and kind of enjoy it and look very serious and stroke our chins and all this kind of stuff. So to other other people, let's say we're not enjoying it, but we really are. So there's no worries about people doing that. But yeah. then, like you've got, you've got, we love, we love the pit boys at the front, having a good time and sharing the energy that we're giving up on stage. So I, I think there's room for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th- I think, may, you know. I think probably from you know even from my younger days maybe when I was more at the front of the gigs and now I'm I'm slowly going to the back uh, yeah. as I get older <laughs> but um there are those moments and 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 if the ba- if the band can get you going you it doesn't matter That's if they, great. It, there, there will be points where I will get down to the front and I, I will wow. pretend I'm you know 16 17 years old again so <laughs> <laughs> although I don't think, I don't think the body can hold out that well anymore at this age <laughs> Um, so yeah, so um, you've you obviously you've uh, John Hill stage at Glastonbury, Reading, and yeah. Leeds. Your your um, your last day at the tour 
is in Reading. You're doing a homecoming show. How how excited are you yeah. for that? We're really excited. I think we're going to just try and play for as long as possible. <laughs> um, it's going to be the last. Um, it's going to be the last show, UK tour show for a huge amount of time. Like uh, it's like uh, we won't be back in the UK really until we uh, play the festivals and stuff. Mm. So. Um, it should be fun. Um, with Reading, like the Hexagram, for us, it's like such a legendary venue in terms of like, not many bands play there. As far as I know, a Reading band, a hometown band, never played anywhere that big yeah. in Reading. Um, it's quite and, achieving, uh, yeah. I mean, everyone knows it because we all went to like, the Christmas pantomime and I saw the Chuckle Brothers there. <laughs> and this is the show that like, everyone in town like, my old job at the supermarket, they will all be there yeah, so yeah. you know what it is. It's not some obscure venue at the side of town. It's like, it's the big theatre yeah. of, of the town. So it's a it's a big thing for Reading. And I think uh, everyone in Reading should be proud. Like, this, we're not known for a music scene, but then we've produced two bands who've gone on to have top 40 records um, in the same year. So... Well, so reasons to be cheerful absolutely I yeah I say I, I wish you the best of, of uh, luck with, with the tour especially Reading I'm, I'm sure it's going to be great and obviously February the 8th um, at the Junction um, if you haven't yeah. got your tickets already make sure you get them uh, Junction is a brilliant venue and I'm sure you're going to have a, yeah. a have a, an amazing uh, gig there and uh, hopefully I, I well I'll be there at the front I'm sure um, awesome. But um, until then, um, we're, we're going to play out with uh, your brand new single. Uh, can I just get you to introduce that for us, please? Sure. Uh, hi, this is Matt from the Amazons, and you're listening to our new single, Palace. Amazon. Amazon.